I've read most of your comments on my previous video, and I was honestly surprised by how many of you are asking for a part 2. I've also seen the other comments, and I really appreciate them. Your feedback is what keeps me going on this platform, I don't need anything else but that. For those of you who have been subscribed to this channel for a while, thank you for sticking with me. And to the newcomers, welcome. Feel free to check out my older videos so you won't keep wondering about my robot voice. Previously, we delved into the controversial claim that America was charted on maps long before Columbus's famed 1492 voyage. The idea that no maps of America existed prior to this date is often presented as fact, but various pieces of evidence challenge this notion. First, we examined a map known as the Vatican Ptolemy, drawn by Nicholas Germanus for the Pope. Interestingly, this map was created before Columbus set sail, as Germanus died in 1490. The map shows North America connected to Europe via Greenland and Canada, alongside other curious features, like Australia as part of an ice-free Antarctica. The map's name honors Claudius Ptolemy, a Greek geographer who depicted the American continents as far back as 1400 years prior. Next, we explored Ptolemy's own map of the universe. This map from the 2nd century AD portrays the continent surrounded by rings of water, fire, and realms beyond. Notably, it shows North America in a configuration predating the 1600s, with features like the separation of California from the mainland, something that matches pre-modern cartography. We also touched upon ancient transoceanic travel, emphasizing the Phoenicians, Pacific Islanders, and others who mastered long-distance voyages far before Columbus's time. These peoples left traces in lands like South America and the Pacific Islands, casting doubt on the claim that no transoceanic contact occurred before Columbus. Finally, we turn to two crucial maps. One from the Doge's Palace in Venice, dated 1428, and another from Alcabaza Monastery. Both maps depict geographical features like the Cape of Good Hope and the Strait of Magellan, centuries before their official discoveries. These findings suggest that ancient explorers might have mapped more of the world than we give them credit for, challenging the modern narrative of discovery. Anyway, if you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video, the link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. 5. The Zhenghe World Map this is the Zhanghe World Map, from China, 1418. This is one of the maps author Gavin Menzies uses to prove Chinese discovery of America prior to Columbus. Of course academics say, well, it can't be from 1418 because we know that America was discovered in 1492. This is called circular reasoning. I come across it frequently in academia. Notice how in 1418, California is separate from the mainland. An island, just like the ancient legends of the Native Americans said. 6. Advanced Map Making To give you an idea of how non-primitive these people were, here's a part of the Cantino map, 1502, alongside a modern map. Some say it's impossible to achieve that level of accuracy without advanced knowledge. This is the Piri Rice map of 1513, which shows a part of South America in meticulous detail, and parts of an ice-free Antarctic, about 500 years before both were known in any detail. The remainder of the world map is missing. 7. Knowledge of the Atlantic in 1424 This is called the Pisagano Portal and Seafarer's Chart. It's from 1424, and shows Western Europe and the islands of the Atlantic Ocean. It contains surprisingly accurate outlines of the Canary Islands, Madeira Islands, and the Azores. Academics say, it features both real and mythical islands. I've talked about the advanced mapmaking of Portland charts elsewhere, but let me reiterate that Portland charts never dealt in mythology, only in facts and meticulous detail. Rather than being mythical, the islands of Antilly and Satanases, large red and blue on the map, are probably sunken. The map is written in Portuguese and Venetian. Portugal and Venice were both expert navigators of the Atlantic. History books say that we know the Azores were discovered in 14,313. The problem is. This map shows the Azores in 1424. The Azores, by the way, are almost halfway to America, surrounded by vast stretches of ocean. If you had ships that could travel to the Azores, then you had ships that could travel to America. 
Satanases, the island of the devil, is located where we would today find Bermuda. Maybe no coincidence. Portland maps of the 1300s and 1400s were so precise, it's hard to imagine these people had zero knowledge of other continents. They're more precise than later maps, as if we regressed over time. This is what they say pre-Columbian maps look like, this one being from 1482. These cut-off maps are ridiculous, given as chicken feed to the non-elite. They pretend the Norse never knew Iceland or Greenland, and that the world abruptly ends in the middle of Africa. On the other hand, they tell us, Egyptians, Romans and Phoenicians, circled Africa. This map, by the way, is also claimed to be by Nicholas Germanus. That's really strange, because earlier we saw that Germanus was familiar with all continents. This completes the hard proof section of this video. The next section presents speculative evidence of pre-Columbian knowledge of America. 8. Circle World The date of the Chinese world map, called the Harris map, seems to be unknown. In a brief online search, I found one source saying it's from 1328. Another said 1700 AD. And other from the 1800s. But just because someone publishes, copies, or catalogues a map in the 1800s, doesn't mean it was drawn then. I've talked about this in previous videos. I believe this is what the Earth looked like a long time ago, prior to the year 1000, which is actually the year zero of Christ, if you know 1000 years have been added to our timeline. The map mimics many others from this time. If I flip the map, it'll make more sense to you. Still confusing. Somebody made an English language version of the map. The Americas were once part of a landmass that, along with Antarctica and Australia, were circling the Earth. Too far-fetched. Not if you consider that your contemporary school maps are a distortion, and that continents actually look like this. Except that the North Pole is at the center, not Cairo. Pre-1700s maps show Australia and South America as part of Antarctica, which used to be fertile. I've gone into this in previous videos. This is an old Japanese map that I downloaded from the Library of Congress website. They claim it was created between 1800 and 1850. That creation date is disputed. Who is disputing it? I am. If you tell me something was made some time between 1974 and 2024, I realize you don't really know when it was made. And if you don't know when it was made, the dating is up for grabs. Nobody, much less the Japanese, believe this is what the world looks like as late as the 1800s. It's how the world was seen in the 1200s to 1500s. Here, Australia is part of the Antarctic. Notice, it forms a circle that connects Antarctic, the Americas, and the Arctic. A map showing Russia and America united. Here's a map from the days America and Russia were one, and the Antarctic was fertile. Francesco Gasolfi, 1565. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 3.